Ambernick has been in business for a while. And if you think they're a great company now, you got to remember where they started. Look at these handhelds, some of the very first early handhelds that Ambernick produced. They are, are, are awful. The PMP2, um, this line is much like what you would call awful now. Back in the day, these probably had a market and certainly served a purpose, but Ambernet has come a long ways. And this is why I'm excited to take a look at all these other up and coming companies, because in three to four years from now, someone like Magic X may be just as good as Ambernick. But anyways, today we're doing our review of this guy right here, the RG40XXH. So on the journey all the way from these Fama clones that were terrible to this, which is the very best Linux based handheld that Ambernick sells. And we're going to tell you why in our review. Stay tuned. Hey Fred, what are you doing? Hey, look, it's the Wall Street Bets guy. Fred, I think you need to bet on this this stock that's coming up. Man, I don't I don't know if I need to do that. You you think I really should? Yeah, I really think you should. You should really bet on this Nvidia stock. It is really kind of hitting. Nvidia, man. Yeah, but Nvidia is more for PC gaming and AI, and I'm more into retro gaming. You should still invest into it because someday those games will be retro games too. You know what, Wall Street guy? You're right. Anyways, what am I doing? I'm not Wall Street Bets. Today, guys, we're going to do a review of this, the RG40XXH. So let's hop into this and let me tell you what I like about this, what I didn't like, and why I think you should pick it up. So here we have it, the Ambernick RG40XXH. This year began with this guy right here, the 35XXH which I wasn't expecting to like, but once we reviewed it, I fell in love with this guy. And I still love this handheld. It is a great handheld. I still recommend this handheld. But now that this guy is out here for just a little bit more space in your pocket, and this is not exactly super pocketable anyways, you're gonna get more screen real estate. And the difference between three and a half inch to four inches, once you're scaling, is quite significant. And so today we're taking a look at this and we're gonna review this. Now, <clears throat> I'm doing this review a little bit different than I normally do because we've looked at so many of these H700 CPUs. So as far as performance goes, we know the drill here. We know how this performs. These two right here are going to perform identical. There's not going to be any difference as far as how they're going to perform or play. So it comes down to form factor. In fact, if you want the flip, the, the flip style GBA one, it's going to also perform. The only differences are in some of the custom firmware and the way they handle sleep and other small things like that. But this guy is the most recent and probably the last H700 that Ambernick is going to release. At least that's what Mac Zhao has said um, publicly, but he changes his mind and things do change. So let's take a look at this. And what do I really like about this? Well, we have the typical Ambernick style here, the typical, you know, quality that we've come to expect. Again, uh, I started this review off reminding everybody just where Embernet came from and how some of these older handhelds are, are not very well received. Um, but this is, is got a really good build quality. The plastic here is really nice. It feels good. It doesn't feel too cheap and it's very appropriate for the $70 asking price. Um, we do have the dual card slots, which I just now, you know, I can't really go back to the single slot on the K36 that we just reviewed. It has a single slot. I, I just, I'm so used to this. That it's, it's kind of a must for this. This is a, a nearly, nearly ideal device. And especially for someone who has not yet picked one up, you know, the MiU Mini, uh, or the plus with, with Onion OS is still a great starter handheld. But this, this guy right here is, I think it's better. I think it surpassed it, and I'm going to tell you why I think that this is best. But remember to hit that like button and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a review from us. Uh, also, leave me a comment. Let me know, am I crazy? Am I far off? What do you think about this? Have you tried this? Do you think the H700 is just too weak for what you're looking for? Um, anyways, let's continue. 
But going back to build quality, um, this is a handheld that is older that I just picked up recently. And I like this, but I do see a, a, a just a vast majority of how the evolution has occurred here in Ambernick. For one, this is super slick. Um, this plastic is really super slick. It doesn't feel, it just doesn't feel as well made as this one. Although it, it looks, I think it looks nice under the light. Um, but you can see here that it's really just uh, an entirely different kind of, of plastic here. It's very slick. Um, these buttons are super shiny, but they're, they're very clicky. Very, very clicky. And they're in, in line where we finally got stacked shoulders here. And these are pretty clickly as well. But again, between the two devices, you can see this one is about three and a half, four years old. Uh, and this one, of course, released this year. So you can see the difference here between the two. Not to mention that the software on this is, is much, much dated and not anywhere near as good as that. But I wanted to just show the evolution, the D-pad. This D-pad is stiffer and doesn't pivot nearly as well as this D-pad. This D-pad pivots really well, feels really good. And of course, this doesn't have any sticks, but also the buttons. These buttons almost feel like micro switches. I do believe they're membrane. Um, and then here, you've got where you can definitely tell their membrane. So uh, again, an evolution that has occurred here where they've really just improved over time. Um, if you look at the 35XX, these buttons are nearly identical. They feel just about the same. The sticks are identical. And then the D-pad with its pivot is identical. So pretty much letting you know that um, the build quality, if you've tried the 35XXH or any of the recent H700s, the build quality here is the same. It's excellent. It's really good. Not a lot to complain about here for that. Um, the Besides the great, awesome build quality, the software has improved immensely. As I mentioned, the software on this thing is horrendous that it ships with. Um, but stock software here on the... Uh, RG35, I mean, RG4XXH is, is a lot better. And we have the blue one here. I really like this blue colorway. Um, another thing I just remember before I go back is I really like the attention to detail here. So I want to give shout out to Ambernick for attention to detail. If you notice, the bezel here matches the color of the shell. So we have a blue bezel here matching the blue color. And we have a beige bezel matching the beige color. So I really think that is really awesome. Also, like on the triggers, we have a texture here, if you can hear that, a nice texture to these triggers, which feels really good um, and the hand, gives it a nice, real good grip here. So really nice and easy going with the textures there for that. Um, the other things that I really like about this is the overall form factor and comfortability of holding this thing. Uh, it just has a really good form factor. Um, competing, you know, directly with something like Pow Kitty's RGB 10 Max 3, the non-pro one. That has a little bit of a better CPU, although I'm not sure that the 3566 is that significantly better than the H700. But I didn't really like the form factor of that one as much. I didn't like the super flat bottom of it. This one is just more rounded in places, and I think it's overall a lot better. Moving into software... Um, as I mentioned, the software has improved quite a bit on stock software here. Um, this is a, pretty much consistent along the H700 line. So if you've used this software on any of their previous devices, you're going to be very familiar with it. If you go into their, their what they call the game room, you're going to get pretty much a curated, customized version of how they want you to see the games. Um, they pretty much have them... Um, set up for you. So if you're just looking for plug and play, um, you can go in and you can put different displays on here like fast HD. You can change the aspect. Let's do an overlay if you want to see an overlay here. And so it's just really curated and easy to use for that um, to give you that look. This overlay eats up a lot of screen real estate. So if you're going to use it on this four inch version, it's going to be much better than using it on the RG35XXH because you're going to, you're going to have more of the actual gameplay be able to show and be visible uh, while playing it. 
And so it just really brings it uh, a much better if you're going to do that. Of course, you know, you probably maybe you just want to go with aspect and have it right there with the bars on the top. Or you can go in and just do a full screen here and just have the full screen take it um, and work. Any of those looks good. Again, if you have somebody that just you're, you're just starting out, you're first entering the world of this and you want a handheld that's just pick up and play, start with the game rooms. Now, that being said, where I think that really you're going to have more um, a better experience once you actually learn how to use this or if you already know how to use these systems is going to be in your um, your retro arc menu so if you go into here then you can set this thing up and you can really start to um, control the shaders you can control the look of it a lot more you can fix and add different um, overlays and really make it just look a lot more so i have an overlay here that i have loaded in where it's got the little game boy advance at the bottom i've got a shader on it and nintendo at the top and i think this looks a lot better it doesn't eat up as much real estate as the other one so you get a much more better uh, overall look of that so let me just zoom in here and play a little bit of alien hominid just so you can get an idea of what game boy looks on this thing which is which is really great this is a pretty good um, device to play Game Boy on. Of course, this is going to play up to PS1, Dreamcast, N64, Nintendo DS, um, levels of, of things like that. Um, Pico is going to look fairly good on this, although you're going to have bezels um, for it. But you can see it's got a really good screen on this. This IPS screen is, is really nice at the 640 by 40 resolution, giving us a 4-3 aspect ratio. Um, so you can see here, this is going to scale much better than, than on Game Boy, which is uh, Game Boy Vetch's 3.2. It's going to scale just about perfectly for something like your, your home consoles in 16-bit era. So, yeah, you can see that just the controls are great. Now let's talk about these sticks, okay? Ambernick, it's time to dump these sticks. There is no excuse at this point. Magic X just released a uh, $50 console that has those retroid style sticks that are just amazing and awesome and it's time for you guys to dump that so that's a big criticism here by now i expect you to have better sticks these sticks serve the purpose they're not terrible they're not great but now that we have better choices they're looking really long in the tooth so let's try to get some better sticks out there um, for, for future versions or future games. I hope this not only the last H700, if that's what it is, but also the last we see of Switch style sticks um, now that we have that better choice. The other thing, criticism, let's talk about some of the things that, that I'll criticize this about. So one, I think the price is a little bit high right now. Um, you know, the Trim UI Smart, which this is kind of mocking or, you know, Max likes to go after certain um, competitors I gotta say is you know coming in at $50 now and has a bit bigger screen and um, a lot of community support so I really gotta get this price down since this is going for 80 70 80 dollars right now the other thing is um, this thing starts to get get really warm back here now I know Stubbs you know, he mentioned it, other people didn't see it, but I, I have two of these, and I'm going to tell you that both of these start getting really warm right back here when I, I, I play certain systems and push it to certain levels. Um, so that, that is something I think that the CPU, there should be ventilation here. There's not any ventilation here. I think that's probably maybe down here, but that's where your speakers are coming out of. So really, that's another criticism I have of this. They should have given us some sort of ventilation back here. Um, I know they believe that the CPU doesn't overheat, but it really could do much better uh, for that uh, reason. Um, the other thing is custom firmware. At this time, um, we don't have MuOS or Nully fully supported. Nully is in alpha. MuOS is in private testing. But again, we at least have some really good um, software from Ambernick to... Um, you know play right now so this is going to have better software you know at some point in the future it's going to certainly get a lot better as time goes on and we'll have that um so this is let's wrap this video up and wrap this review up of the ambernick rg 
Um, 40XXH. We gotta get better names in the future, Amber Nick, um, as we play some Pico here. But this is a very highly recommend. If you're going to skip the form factor or if you, you know, between this and the SP, I would pick this. Yes, the SP is nostalgic and the SP is good, but it has a set of its own problems. And I think that, you know, if you're only going to get one of the two, I think this bigger screen is going to give you much more um, enjoyability in the long run. If you're really wanting um, a three and a half inch, you know, Game Boy uh, Advance or Game Boy device, the PAL Kitty V10, I love that device. That device is just going to, um, you know, be much better um, if you're going to spend in a lower amount. But anyways, guys, this has been my review of the RG40XXH. To sum it up again, I love this device. I think it's great. It's fantastic. It does have issues, like all handhelds. we got to get better sticks on these things. It gets hot and warm on the back. The price is still a little too elevated for what you're getting. And custom software firmware is not quite there yet. Um, but if you can live with those limitations, I think that you're going to be super excited and very good and happy with this um, because it is just a, a wonderful little handheld um, that really shows the evolution that um, Ambernick has, has come. Anyways, guys, I hope you have a great rest of your week. Make sure you stay safe out there and hug your loved ones. We'll see you next time. Dead Fred out.